So examples of cross multiplying, which just makes your life easier, okay? Again, that's all four possibilities. You can do any one, two, three, or four of those possibilities, those little arrows of these. I think of them as moves, okay? So for example, if I had two thirds equals five X, I would do these moves, why? Well, first of all, I want the X in the numerator. So I'm gonna move the X from here over to here. And then I want X alone. So I don't want this two here and I don't want the three there. So I move the three over there and I move the two down there. Remember when you move it from one side of the equation to the other, you have to go across the equals. You have to, so the numerator becomes denominator. Multiply becomes divide. Divide becomes multiply like that, see? So if I do that, I get X equals 15 halves, I'm done. I don't have to do a whole bunch of crazy algebra stuff. Now, you can't do that with this problem. Why? Well, what's a factor of the left side? The whole left side. <laughs> so you could put that in the denominator on the right side, but it just makes a huge mess. So none of these numbers are a factor of the, of the left side. So you can't do the cross multiplying with this. Okay. Now what you can do is you can write the two fractions on the left as a single fraction, and then you can cross multiply if you want to do this problem that way. But, so, now you could move the two to the left because the two is a factor of the denominator on the right, this two here, just move it up here, but it has to be times both of these. And there's really no reason to do that. I can't even think of an example where one would wanna do that. So if you see something like this, you don't cross multiply. When you're cross multiplying, usually you have a fraction equal to a fraction. We call that a proportion. You'll see we have a whole section on proportions later. But a fraction equal to fraction, that's when we do all this cross multiplying stuff, okay? It just happens to come up frequently, so it's useful to know the shortcut. So this, this shortcut cross multiplying thing is not useful in this problem, is what I'm saying here. So instead what I would do is isolate the X term, which is X over five, by moving the term two thirds to the other side, remember if you move a term, not a factor, but a term to the other side of the equation, it becomes the opposite. So it's minus two thirds. And then I probably would put these two fractions together by getting a common denominator of six. So multiply by two over two and three over three, put them together, right? Like that. And I can, the little arrow just says, I'm going to the next step because I'm not doing it vertically, I'm doing it horizontally. So I just put arrows, not equals. This is, this is not an equal sign here. It's just an arrow saying, this goes to this, goes to that. So now I have a common denominator. I can subtract the numerators, right? So I get X over five equals, now I can cross multiply, see? So I can just put the five up there. So X is negative five, six. Right? That's a cross multiply. Done. Okay, so that's an example.